Welcome to Pathways of Hope. About eight years ago, as I was about to go on a long trip abroad, I wrote a document where I enumerated instructions to certain people on what to do in case something happened to me. I carefully thought and prayed about those instructions, knowing that I could only leave the most important ones. Faced with the possibility of not having another opportunity to do so, what I committed to paper told me what mattered most to me. Today's Gospel, taken from Mark chapter 16, verses 15 to 18, tells us Jesus' final instruction to his disciples, that is, to go into all the world and preach the Gospel to all creation. To complete the picture, we must take these words in Mark together with what he said at the end of the Gospel of Matthew. In chapter 28, verses 18 to 20, Jesus in the same event said, quote, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Unquote. The context in which the words are spoken, that is, after the resurrection and before his ascension, emphasizes their importance. Jesus was about to physically depart from earth. That he chose to say those words as his final statements communicates how important they are. We are called, as his disciples, not only to preach the gospel, but also to make disciples. Both are integral to our discipleship. Neither is optional. Our obedience or disobedience to these commands could have eternal consequences for ourselves and others. Preaching the gospel means participating in the work of evangelization, proclaiming the good news of God's salvation to others. We do this in several ways, by actually proclaiming the gospel to them or by inviting them to hear the gospel by other means like talks or programs, and equally by living lives that proclaim the gospel, lives that are holy and blameless. When we preach the gospel, the result we hope for is that those who hear go through a personal conversion. That is the beginning of discipleship, accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior, allowing Him to have sovereignty in their lives and have an intimate relationship with Him. But our work does not stop there. We are commanded to make disciples as well, that is to help others pursue a life of discipleship a continuing process of transformation into the image and likeness of God. And part of that process is equipping them to likewise preach the good news and make disciples. It is this process that has made it possible for God's work of salvation to reach people through the generations. While salvation is God's work, He allows us to participate in it. When we obey His commands, we become His mouthpiece, his hands and his feet in bringing people to a relationship with him. That is an incomparable privilege that we must appreciate and respond to with humility and gratitude. If we think about it, who are we that God invites us to help in his work? But he does. Isn't this a wonderful gift? Can you imagine being instrumental in bringing someone to know fullness of life in Christ? Today is also the feast of the conversion of St. Paul. After his conversion, St. Paul relentlessly proclaimed the good news and discipled many followers that he became known as the Apostle to the Gentiles. Without his single-hearted response to God's call to him, who knows where we, Quote, unquote, the Gentiles would be right now. Without the men and women responding through generations to the command to preach the good news and make disciples, we would most likely not know Christ now. As we respond ourselves, we are assured of God's presence accompanying us and the Holy Spirit empowering us. Let us therefore take Jesus' final commands to heart to preach the gospel, and to make disciples. Today, take time to remember the people who preach the good news to you through their words and lives, and who invested their time, talent, and treasure to help you in your walk with the Lord. Thank the Lord for them and pray for them. 
If you can, send them a message of thanks. In addition, resolve not to let the work stop with you. Ask the Lord for grace to obey His commands and to open doors for you to bring the good news to others and to help in their discipleship as well. God bless you.